So, <laughs> one of our viewers wrote in with a really good question, the kind of question that just sets me off and inspires me. He asked, what are entheogens? What do they do and how do they work? This is a great question because it's structural. Huh? It's not about a subjective opinion, but it's about what is this thing, what does it do, and how does it work? So these are the kind of questions I like very much. I wish we would get more of them. <laughs> so um, what is an entheogen? Well, I prefer the term entheogen over less specific terms or more generic terms like drugs. Uh, drugs has such a negative connotation. And actually we're not talking about things that are usually thought of as drugs. Really we're talking about cannabis, psilocybin, and DMT the active ingredient in ayahuasca. These three are basically the entheogens. And there's a few more kind of borderline cases like mescaline, MDMA or MDA. Uh, but these aren't strictly entheogens. They also have heavy physical side effects. Uh, Mescaline, for example, only 50 times a normal dose of mescaline is already toxic. Whereas with the mushrooms, the toxicity is so low as to be immeasurable. <laughs> it can't be measured. It's so non-toxic. So these three substances, basically, are the entheogens. And what do they do? Well, I think they are imagination amplifiers. Imagination amplifiers. Now, in Western culture or materialistic culture, no matter where it's from, you'll often hear people say things like, oh, that's just in your mind, or that's just your imagination, huh? or that's not real because it's a thought. But if you think about it a little bit, imagination is really the most important faculty that we have. It's because of imagination that every new invention, every advance in civilization, every new piece of art, anything new at all, actually, comes from imagination. And what is imagination, actually? Well, you can say it's the faculty of visualizing things. But it's actually far more than that. Imagination lets us model things. Imagination and dreams are very closely linked. Uh, the real difference, the main difference, is that imagination shows up in Jagrat consciousness, consciousness of the world, external sense consciousness, and of course the senses including the mind. So when the mind becomes visual or visible, this is called imagination. And we use it for a lot of things. We use it to model. 
systems and situations and to work out the consequences of our actions. We use it to predict what's going to happen in the future. I mean, we use imagination for so many things, to test out new ideas and so many other things. And of course, for a creative type of person, imagination is their stock and trade. Uh, that's the source of their wealth, of their creativity. So imagination is very, very important. And imagination is linked with dreams. What are dreams anyway? Huh? Did you ever give it some thought? Dreams are visions that arise spontaneously during sleep. That's one way to define dreams. <clears throat> but dreams can also happen while we're awake. Daydreams. Huh? trying to get the attention of a sleepy student in the back of the room, the teacher might say, hey, what are you daydreaming about? <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> well, he is awake, but his attention is not on the senses. His attention is on the mind. And he's unfolding some scenario and visualizing it with his imagination. So imagination is like a dream that takes place in the waking state. So it's a specific type of dream or a dream that arises in a specific circumstance. But dreams in general, dreams during sleep, are a great mystery. Where are dreams? Where do they happen? Where are all the sets, huh? the backgrounds, the environments that dreams occur or seem to occur in? A dream is, can be full of people and they can be people we know or people we don't know. And of course, any kind of weird things can happen in a dream. It can segue from one thing to something completely different in a heartbeat. And when you're asleep and dreaming, you don't even take notice of it. It's just like, okay, so everything just changed and now we're walking on the ceiling <laughs> or whatever. But dreams are not subject to the ordinary rules of the physical world. Physics, chemistry, biology, psychology, Throw it all out. It's anything goes in dream world. So when that dream world shows up, that's called Svapna consciousness. And when that Svapna, that dream consciousness, shows up in our waking consciousness, Jagrat consciousness, then we call it imagination or daydream. But again, let's look at the source. Where does all this material come from? Well, some of it is clearly based on memory. A lot of times in dreams, we'll relive things that happened in the past. Uh, but the real value in dreams is the novelty, the unexpected new stuff that shows up. Where is that coming from? Well, you could be tautological about it and say it's just your imagination. <laughs> but if your imagination is based on dreams, how can dreams be based on imagination? That would be circular. No, we think that dreams come from the source of all creation. That is Saguna Brahman spirit or consciousness with form. And of course, this is the goddess. This is the mother. This is the womb from which all creation takes place. So, hey, just whipping up a few weird dreams is nothing for her. Huh? And so what happens when we take an entheogen to a greater or lesser degree 
is that our dreams become more manifest in waking consciousness. Now, this can be, how can I say, awkward <laughs> or dangerous even. Let me tell you a little story. Once a traveler was walking in the woods. He was very hungry and tired. It was the end of the day. And still there was no shelter or no village or anything on the path. So he picked a nice looking tree and went to camp out underneath the shelter of the tree. And as he was uh, sitting there arranging his things, he thought, boy, I sure am hungry. It would be great to have some food. And he heard a little noise like a bell behind him. Ting! And he looked around the back of the tree and here's this full course meal with all the trimmings. <laughs> And of course, he's sorry, he's starving, so he just like pounces on it and polishes it off in record time. And he's sitting there, you know, burping, <laughs> fully satisfied. And he goes, oh, man, wouldn't it be great to just have a nice bed so I could take a nap? You know, sleep, a comfortable sleep tonight instead of on the hard ground. And again, he hears this little bell, ding, and he goes back around the other side of the tree, and lo and behold, there's a, a full bed, nicely made up with pillows and everything. And he goes, oh, my answer to a prayer. And he jumps in the bed and he's, ah, you know, <laughs> getting comfortable. And then he starts to doubt. He starts to go, wait a minute. How did this food get here? How did this bed get here? We're in the middle of nowhere. I don't see anybody around. So maybe it's ghosts. Uh, in the forest, there are many ghosts. <laughs> so sure enough, as soon as he thought this, he started seeing ghosts, you know, woo, coming in and he goes, oh, Oh my God, what if those are Brahma Rakshasas? Huh? Brahma ghosts. Oh, maybe they're, they'll attack me and kill me. And so they did. <laughs> so what's the moral of the story? What's the, actually, what's the explanation? The tree was a desire tree, a Kalpa Vriksha. Kalpa means desire or wish or intention. And Vriksha means tree. So if you happen to sit under a tree that is a desire tree, whatever you think about with intention will occur. So this is very similar to imagination. That we can make it do stuff, but we can only make it do stuff within the parameters of what we already know, or what we've already experienced or learned. We can, for example, with our imagination, we can visualize something. Oh, like, for example, uh, an engine. If we're trying to troubleshoot uh, an engine and there's something wrong with it and we can't find out what it is, we think down and visualize the whole engine with all the parts and say, okay, now, what would go wrong to cause this problem? And in that way, we can find out the cause. This is modeling. It's another function of imagination. Or maybe we just want to have a pleasant experience, so we have a dream like a movie. But. If we lose track of the fact that we're in our imaginations and we start to think that this is real, well, then the same kind of thing can happen to us as happened to that poor traveler because the imagination is a desire tree. The imagination is the source of everything new, of everything exciting. So, the imagination is ultimately the goddess. 
She is the one putting all these dreams in front of us. And of course, we know that the average modern adult lives mostly in their imagination because they accept as real many, many things that are just abstractions, just dreams themselves, like corporations, nations, uh, any kind of business, money, stock, transactions. They're just words on paper. They're simply abstractions, but we behave as if they're real. The idea of owning land, for example, it's a completely ridiculous idea on the face of it. Or how, how about the Big Bang? Huh? <laughs> totally ridiculous idea that everything came from nothing in an instant with no cause. Uh, yeah, right, sure. If you believe that, you'll believe anything, you know. But the modern adult today, what do they do? They think they own their car, their house. Huh? They think my family, my wife, my children is all mine. So many other possessions, all mine, 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 mine. My job, my position my salary, my country, my political party, my religion, my philosophy, my name, even, all of these are simply abstractions. So we live in dreams. And we can stay sane if we understand that these are dreams, that these, these are abstractions. When we go crazy is when we start to believe that they're true, that they're real, that they are something substantial, even though they're not. So the opportunity with entheogens is to tremendously enhance the imagination. And the danger of entheogens is that they tremendously enhance the imagination. <laughs> Because if we accept a dream as real, we become confused and lost. And I'm going to make another video. Next video I make, I don't know when it's going to be, <laughs> whenever I get around to it, is going to be about this world view. How the entheogens bring the dreams into reality. Even the dreams that are very difficult to cognize uh, can be very easily brought into reality through entheogens. And this is their value, and this is also their danger. That like any powerful tool, you have to have the skills. You have to have the right point of view, the knowledge, and the skill, the willpower to use that skill. And then you can use these visualizations, these imaginations, to visualize anything that you want. And that is the key to the spiritual liberation. And we'll discuss this in the next video. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.